Oh my god, it's an LED in a contact lens. I think VR displays are right around the corner. Hey everyone, Ben here. Uh, it seems every so often on the internet uh, this story comes up with about the contact lens with an LED in it. Uh, and I think the, uh, the group that did this put it into a rabbit's eye, so I thought I'd one-up them and uh, put it into my own eye. So let me show you how I did it. I started by winding 40 turns of number 40 wire on a form. This is just an aluminum rod that's uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And I soldered the ends of the magnet wire to a very small 0402 LED. And this is a low profile 0402 LED. Uh, so that when I put this into the contact lens it won't uh, poke out so much. Uh, the total height of this whole thing is under a millimeter. It's very hard to measure because the coils kind of overlap and, and make it difficult. Uh, anyway, so, th so the way that I um, plan to power this circuit is just through plain inductive coupling. I originally wanted to uh, do a tuned circuit and have a uh, capacitor inside the contact lens as well. So the best way of transferring power through a large airspace is with a, uh, a resonant inductive circuit. Unfortunately, there's just so little room inside the contact lens, I went with just a straight coil. So the coil's connected directly to the LED, and for half the cycle, uh, power won't flow because the LED is blocking it. And through the other half of the cycle, uh, power will flow through the LED, and we'll get some light out of it. So I tried a few different drivers. Um, I was hoping to switch the power on and off through the transmitter coil, which is... Uh, about 80 turns of uh, number 32 wire and uh, didn't have much luck with that so I ended up sort of making a spark gap transmitter. I know this is pretty silly but I had a relay laying around and I noticed that when I just engaged the relay and sent power through the transmit coil I would get a, a flash out of the LED and I tried doing this with semiconductors switching elements and couldn't get it to work. It really had, <clears throat> it was actually using the spark as the transmitting uh, element. So it was dumping, you know, broadband noise into the coil. And eventually some frequency uh, propagated well enough through the system to actually light the LED up. So I figured I would just turn the relay on and off over and over again and make myself a little strange spark gap kind of transmitter here. So that's what I did. I used my uh, frequency generator and a simple low power switching transistor just to open and close the relay and that dumps power through the transmit coil uh, you know a few times a second so I tested it out on the bench and put the the small 40 turn receiver coil inside the transmit coil which has a diameter of about an inch and a quarter and uh, it was rely you know it was reliable I could get the LED to flash pretty well so then I proceeded with the construction of the contact lens itself uh, I started with a soft contact lens. Uh, this is a uh, Siba Vision Toric, Focus, Focus Toric, I think. Air Optics? I don't know, they keep changing the brand on me, I'm not sure anymore. Uh, but I've been wearing contact lenses for quite a while, probably over 10 years or something, and I'm pretty familiar with putting them in my eyes. So I started with a contact lens and put the 40 turn receiver coil onto it and started to dry the lens out. Um, oh, I should add, I, I soaked these lenses in distilled water for a while. Uh, I was following the directions that I found online uh, that a research group put together for doing search coils inside contact lenses. So a search coil is a way to do eye tracking uh, by embedding a coil into a contact lens. And the uh, research group was nice enough to publish some construction details in their paper. Unfortunately, it didn't quite pan out, so I soaked the lens in distilled water and kind of laminated the receiver coil between uh, that lens and another lens, which I also soaked in distilled water. Uh, but it didn't take. It, it was, uh, it, you know, the, the, the lenses didn't stick together well enough. So what I ended up doing was uh, heating up a pair of tweezers and then pinching the two lenses at the periphery to sort of melt the plastic together. And this worked okay. It actually did um, stitch the two lenses together well enough. Unfortunately, it was even less uh, comfortable in my eye with this strange kind of burned, you know, twisted plastic edge on there. I, I wouldn't say it was extremely painful, but it was definitely um, not something you'd want to keep going for a long time. <laughs> 
good to make a video, but not good to wear uh, throughout the day. But I will add, when I had the contact lens, uh, just in my, in my initial try, where I just had the two lenses uh, cemented together without any of this, you know, hot tweezer burning, it actually was, you know, reasonably comfortable. I mean, the, the front and back surfaces are both smooth. It was a little bulky in my eye, but it was definitely smooth, and I could blink and move my eye around, and it seemed just fine. So if any of you have any tips about gluing contact lenses together, uh, let me know. I've tried super glue in the past for other contact lens projects, and that really doesn't work very well because the super glue um, fogs the contact lens, causes it to turn milky, and uh, it's very difficult to get the thing in the right place uh, before the glue sets. So take a look. Here's some more footage of uh, the lens of the LED flashing in my eye. And now, of course, I did this for your benefit, so the LED is facing outward. <laughs> If I were going to make a, a real VR display with this thing, obviously the LED would have to face inward, which I also tried off camera, and um, the light is unfocused. So one of the problems with building a display in a contact lens is that uh, there, there needs to be a, a lenslet or a small lens uh, between the light source and the edge of the contact. Uh, otherwise, the light just sprays out into your eye and covers the entire retina. If you actually want to make an image from something that's being projected from the surface of the eye, you have to get some additional optics in there. And if you want to do an entire two-dimensional display, you have to have an optical element for essentially every pixel. So there's a lot of um, technical issues that are going to prevent contact lens displays from happening anytime soon. But, you know, the future's a long way off, right? Okay, see you next time, guys. Bye.